Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today we are going to make a lamp. This is the craziest project I have made as of yet. We are going to take some cicadas. You can hear them. You hear them? That's them. We're going to take some of these guys, we're going to encase them in resin, and we're going to make a desk lamp. You can see the desk being made behind me now. These two should pair with each other very nicely, this project coming soon. But join us as we get this crazy project done, and let's go. Here we go. Ready? Wow! Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this crazy project. Hang in there with me. I know this seems crazy, but this is such a cool thing that happens. Now, of course, these bugs are cicadas and they died of natural causes. We live in Northeast Florida and right now we are in a cicada outbreak season, if you will. I'm gonna post the Wikipedia to these bugs down below. There's too much information to tell you here, but check that link if you wanna learn more about how these bugs bloom or come out of hibernation, if you will, every 13, to 17 years. So what I've done here is I've mixed up some two-part epoxy. This is a polyester resin, if you will. And once I put the catalyst in, I wait about five minutes, it becomes like jelly, which now gives me the opportunity to put these bugs in after they've been clear coated. I wait about 10 minutes for it to solidify even further. And I repeat the same process going over top of these bugs, creating the epoxy or the resin, if you will, to completely encase them. And the next morning it's completely cured. It just pops right out as you can see there, but we've got some work to do. It's a little rough around the edges and we can do much better than that in terms of getting it nice and shiny. So I figured the easiest way to carve these bugs or carve, it just sounds so funny saying that, easiest way to carve this thing, if you will, is on the lathe. So I'm going to take some stamp material, which is the pink stuff you see there, and I'm going to epoxy it to some Baltic birch square block, if you will, that I've made off camera. And this is going to be a two part method. Here is the first part that's going to be attached to the screw chuck on the lathe. And the second one you're going to see here, and it's going to be essentially supported by the tailstock. And there you go. So I'm going to trim this down to rough size, essentially about the same size, actually a little bit smaller than the actual blank I have. And as it turns out, the epoxy did not quite do the job. So CA glue and activator actually worked very well. So I went with that instead. All right, now it's time to see if this crazy thing is going to work. I attach it to the screw chuck on one side. I attach the tailstock to the other. I'm using hot glue here, if you will putting the cicada blank in the middle of this structure and we turn it on and it looks like I got it balanced not too bad. Now we're going to go ahead and trim this very lightly with a carbide tip lathe tool, slowly bringing it to the size I need and this stuff is an absolute mess. Look at that. Holy mackerel. <laughs> All right, now moving on to some sandpaper. We're going to go through the grids from 220 all the way up through micro mesh as you can see here. It starts to get clearer and clearer. The micro mesh goes all the way up to 12,000. And we're getting close. We're getting real close. All right, well, we've gotten up to 12,000 grit on the sides, but the top and bottom I couldn't do because you see that they're attached, compressed in there on that lathe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna bring them to the workbench on a piece of glass. We're gonna start with 600 grit sandpaper, wet sanding the top and bottom. All right, after doing the top and bottom on the 600 grit, you can see here it's flat. However, it's not clear at all. Very hazy, very chalky. Now we got to fix that. So there is a product out there. It's micro mesh on a large scale. You can see here that these fit to my random orbit sander. And again, they run from the 600 grit variety all the way up to 12,000. And we are essentially going to go through this process. And you're going to see that this block of resin is going to become crystal clear with this method. About halfway through this process, I discovered if I turn my sander upside down and essentially let the blank go by barely giving it a little bit of support, it will sand or spin itself. And the result, I couldn't believe it. After doing this up to the 12,000th grit, the result of this process turned this thing into a crystal clear crystal ball. Again, I'm just kind of hand going over all of the edges with that 12,000 grit. Putting it back on the lathe to get the top. Look how shiny that is. 
fantastic. Now as clear as this may look on camera, it's not exactly 100% as clear as I want it. So I picked up this stuff you're gonna see here. It's basically a friction polish and it's the equivalent of 24,000 to 30,000 grit sandpaper, if you will. I put it on some pieces of micro mesh towel and I rub it by hand. And this gives me an even clearer result that I didn't know was possible. So we've gone from polyester resin that was poured right here in the shop to a blank that is as clear as glass. Check this out. I decided to bring these guys out into the sunlight just to give you a reference of how clear these things are. And let's just say, let's not ignore just how strange these bugs are. And this is probably one of the more bizarre projects that I've ever thought of or ever tried to attempt. And guys, again, if you're here right now, thank you for sticking through. And I promise you, this is gonna be a cool project nevertheless. Look how crazy these things are. <laughs> so cool. With the resin blank complete, it is now time to make our way to the table saw to turn our attention to the base of the lamp. I've got a piece of maple here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a rough block out on the table saw, if you will. And I realize that it's too thick to go into the CNC machine, so I've got to trim down a piece in order to put in there. You can see here I'm sanding it flush. We're gonna take some blue painter's tape, put it down on the CNC machine bed, some blue painter's tape on the workpiece, CA glue them together. That should be plenty strong to clamp the piece down. And we're gonna carve out, yep, you guessed it. Check this out. The wings of a cicada are gonna be in this lamp as well. All right, with the wings finished, we're gonna knock down the edges with some sandpaper, and I've gotta glue these two pieces back together, and I've decided to put a piece of veneer in between the two. I definitely wanna thank Rockler for sending this veneer pack my way. If you wanna take a look at all the Rockler products used in this video, there's a link down below. That silicon mats there, those silicon brushes, that pack of veneer, a whole bunch of stuff they sent my way to make this product possible, and definitely check them out when you get a second. All right, now, we've glued it up, we've clamped it up, and the next day, Looks pretty good, really solid. However, I've got to trim this up and this veneer is so thin that the random orbit sander can just take care of it on one side and then I reference it on my table saw fence to the next side and we trim the whole piece to final dimension. Now I stopped by my local big box store to pick up some lamp parts. However, the cord I'm using is from an old router that bit the dust so I took the cord off and that's gonna be the plug we use to power this bad boy up. Essentially, I'm not going to go into how electricity works here, but we're going to wire in a switch on one side, basically breaking the current from the wall to the device. It's real simple. There's plenty of videos out there how to wire these things up. As you can see here, I'm going through this process. We've got it all set up. I'm going to go ahead and test it out, make sure it works, and we're good to go. Now that I know the system's gonna work, I take everything apart to make some measurements about where I'm gonna put the actual fixtures. A inch and a quarter force the bit is gonna be all I need to go ahead and fit this lamp fixture down in. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark out where the switch is gonna go. I think in between the wings is a good spot. We're gonna mark a center hole and we're gonna drill a 5 8 inch hole that's gonna hold the switch as well. I turn the piece around and I hog out a bunch of material with an inch and a quarter inch Forstner bit, giving me room to put all the wires in when this thing is completed. Now you can see here I've clamped it to the workbench and I've got to somehow break through to get these wires fed from the switch to the light receptacle and a spade bit does a quick work of that as you can see there. Now we take a quarter inch brad bit and drill all the way down. This is going to basically have a place for the cord to come out of, giving the whole thing power and it looks like we're in business. I picked up one of these galvanized receptacle covers from the local big box store. This is a double outlet galvanized receptacle cover and it is going to be recessed in the bottom of the lamp which is going to give a safe place for all these wires to nestle. So as you can see now we're back to the lathe. We're going to kind of sand down this two inch plumbing pipe if you will. It has threads on both sides but I don't need the threads. I need what's in between them. I need the nice piece of steel in between. 
So I've clamped my angle grinder down to my workbench. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do what I do, okay? Uh, I feel like I was able to do this. I've done this before. This is not exactly a how-to, but this was my method of getting the ring that I needed to customize for this process. After getting that ring cut down, I bring it to my disc sander and I'm going to grind down a flat surface on eight sides, giving me an octagonal pattern, just because I like the aesthetics of it. As I'm grinding away, the shape is coming to fruition here and I'm actually liking how it looks. However, the surface is not as clean as I want it. This is a 120 grit grinding disc that I have there. So I'm taking some emery paper that I've made a sanding block out of, which is 400 grit and I'm by hand rubbing each side along this piece and the finish turns out fairly nice as you can see here. So in this piece of metal, this is the base that the cicadas will rest on as the light shines through them. Now we're gonna mix some two-part epoxy with some pigment. Definitely wanna shout out these two companies, Total Boat and Black Diamond Pigments. You guys rock. Thank you for the samples. Thank you for the epoxy. I'm gonna link down below where you can find all their products. This is definitely two things that go hand in hand together and they work so well together. Guys, thank you so much. As you see here, we're gonna take some of this blue colored epoxy and we're gonna pipe it into the recess that is the cicada wings. I simply made a makeshift pastry bag, if you will, out of parchment paper to fill up the epoxy with, and I'm just piping it in. This is only just gonna create me having less to do later on, less mess, if you will, and more control putting that epoxy into those recesses. Now, with some 120 grit sandpaper all the way up to 400 grit as well, we get that epoxy down to the level of the wood, and it turned out fairly nice. Check that out, guys. Now, I'm taking a sanding block and I'm hand chamfering all the edges on the base just to kind of break the edges and make this thing look a little nicer. And this is always a nice feel to me. Again, I'm gonna go through the Micro Mesh 2 on this epoxy to try to bring out some of that shine. And we're gonna get this top going all the way to 12,000 grit. So after 12,000 grits, I'm trying to show you that without any finish at all, there actually is a sheen to the wood. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and put some walnut oil on this. This is a food safe, non-toxic oil. And I love this stuff. It's made by a company called Mahoney's. And I'm going to link down below where you can find some of it for yourself as well. And this gives a nice sheen to the product. Not overbearing either. It's just right. Very beautiful. All right, now it's time for some assembly. I go ahead and get all the parts I need out in place and I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring this bad boy up. I start out with the switch and the receptacle. We feed the wires in from the back, wire everything up just as before, tuck it all in place, put that conduit plate down to hide everything. And now I make my way to install some of these feet. I got these feet on Amazon. They weren't too much. I think they were about $4 for the whole set. And they had some wings on them, so I figured it would be fitting for this lamp. And I'm just using some brass screws to install them at the four corners. Okay, now with the final assembly, you can see that metal collar goes right there where the LED is. And these guys are making their way back into the project. How y'all doing? <laughs> and here we go. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's very difficult to film light, to film something that's being lit. It's not exactly easy to get it to come through the way it looks to the naked eye. However, I will say this, it was a little bright at this point, a little too bright to even look at. But as cool as that looks right there, I needed to diffuse it somehow. So by a happy accident, I happen to have one of my stickers lying around. I put it underneath and lo and behold, the light that comes off it now is just right. And my logo shines up through the bottom. What a cool accident that was. Such a cool project. Hey guys, thank you for making it to the end of this video. This was a long one, I know, but yes, this was the craziest thing we've ever tried to do here at A Glimpse Inside, and I very much appreciate you being here, and I thank you for your viewership as well. If this is your first time here, I'm gonna invite you to subscribe to the channel, and again, there's gonna be another video over there you can check out as well, and I definitely appreciate everyone who watched this all the way to the end. You guys rock. My name is Chris, this has been A Glimpse Inside, and we will see you on that next video. You ready, boy? Let's go. Wow! Woo